Welcome back to the cat vlog, poorly disguised as a poker vlog. This is episode number 90. I'm here with my co-host Marvin. And uh, for this episode, we play a 5-5 meetup game at Hollywood Park Casino in Los Angeles. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We play some big, interesting pots. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. It's a beautiful Monday afternoon in Los Angeles. We're getting ready for the first ever Southern California meetup game at Hollywood Park Casino. It's an amazing property with tons of action. They allow Andrew and I to host some 5-5, no limit, in the back room, and we fill the place up with 12 tables. Second largest event we've ever done. It's a $500 max buy-in. That's how much I get in yellow circular betting discs. We're ready to roll. 10 minutes in, we're dealt ace-king suited, under the gun plus one. The under the gun player straddles. I raise to 35, player in middle position calls. He's in for a world of hurt. The button calls, the big blind calls, and the under the gun straddler calls. We're going five ways to the flop. This is not an ideal situation with a hand like ace king. The flop comes ace queen six with two diamonds. We've got top pair, top kicker. The opponents check to me. I bet 105 to deny equity. First player to act behind me calls. Not sure how I feel about that. Wouldn't have minded if everyone folded. No other players called though, so it's heads up. Not too bad. The turn is another six. I'm first to act. The pot is already bigger than my stack. I only have one option, and that's to rip it in. Since it was a straddle pot, I essentially started the hand with less than 50 big blinds. Happy to get my stack in under these conditions. If I'm beat, I'm beat. My opponent probably would have raised on the flop with any hand that was ahead though. I'm hoping he'll have an ace and call, thinking that we're either chopping, since a lot of times we could both have aces, sixes, and a queen kicker, or maybe he'll think that I'm bluffing with some kind of flush draw. If he has a flush draw himself, I need to shove in order to deny equity. The player is in agony and isn't sure what to do. He ultimately calls. The dealer puts out the river. It's an offsuit 10. The opponent flashes an ace. I table my cards. The opponent says, nice hand, and lets me know that I've got the winner. He shows ace nine. His kicker doesn't play. We scoop a 1K pot right in the beginning and get the night started off with a boom. Here we've got ace four diamonds in the big blind. We're going to do this pokercoaching.com style in which I'm going to present the hand in a multiple choice format. You can pause it if you like while making your decision. Then I'll tell you what I think the best option is as we go through it. The hijack opens a 20. It folds to us. We can either fold, call, or three bet to 70. Go ahead and pause to pick your choice if you want. Folding is too weak with a suited ace. We're getting a discount since we're in the big blind. We can't let this go under these circumstances. That's the worst option. I actually don't mind three betting. We've got some card removal to make it less likely we're up against a strong hand. The hijack is going to have a relatively wide range, so he should have plenty of hands that he's opening with that'll fold to a three bet. And if we do get called, we'll have some playability. This is the only option that allows us to win the hand right away without seeing a flop. So I like it for that reason too, but I think it's just slightly worse than calling for 15 more, getting two to one, and closing the action. That's what I do. I flat. It's heads up. The flop comes 6-5 deuce. We've got an over, a gut shot straight draw, and a backdoor flush draw. You can either check, bet 20, or bet 30. In this situation, I'm always checking to the pre-flop aggressor. That's the best option. The hijack checks back. The turn is the eight of hearts, so we've improved to a double gutter. Again, we can either check, bet 20, or bet 30. This is a better board for our range than it is for the opponents. And after he checked back flop, feel pretty good betting to potentially get some better ace highs to fold and deny equity from other holdings. If we do get called, we'll have plenty of cards that can give us the winner. Checking is my least favorite option. Betting 30 is my favorite sizing after thinking about it, but I end up betting 20. The hijack calls right away. This can be an indicator that the player is on a draw. Perhaps he's picked up hearts. The river is an ace. We make top pair. Should we check, bet 40, or bet 70? Our hand goes from having very little showdown value to having a lot. The opponent called the turn with an ace high flush draw. We aren't going to be ahead, so it could actually be a bad card for us. It's possible the hijack floated the turn with some other strong aces that didn't have draws too, since we made the turn bet so small. Missed draws without a pair aren't going to be able to call a bet, but they may take a stab at it as a bluff. The way the hand played, it's unlikely that we're going to be up against pocket kings down to nines. These are all hands that we're beating that would be able to call a bet. I don't think there will be many eights in the opponent's range either, since a lot of those would have straight draws on the flop, and he should have bet those at that time. Checking is my favorite option, and that's what I do. Betting small to get called by worse hands isn't too bad either. Betting 70 is my least favorite option because it's unlikely that we'll get called by anything worse. And better hands usually won't be folding. The hijack bets 45. Should we fold, call, or raise to 150? We hit a card that'll often give us the best hand. We didn't check in order to fold. 
We check to induce a bluff or keep the pot manageable and get to showdown. We're getting a great price too, so folding is out of the question. There's certainly no need to turn our hand into a bluff. Raising doesn't have too much merit here either. The best option is to call. Sometimes we're going to have the losing hand, but that's not the case in this instance. The opponent turns over king-7 offsuit, made a loose preflop raise, turned an open-ender, and then bluffed river after missing. We win. You're trying to get some Bradley dollars, huh? I failed that time. I'll get them later. Don't worry. If you enjoyed this format and thought it was helpful to go through different options as if it were a quiz, then click on the link in the description box below for PokerCoaching.com. There are several hundred quizzes just like this one in which you can walk through cash game and tournament hands, some of the best players in the world. Click the link and scroll down. There will be the promo code BRAD already inserted, so you just have to hit the apply button for some huge discounts on a membership. I'm going to be adding a few more quizzes like this one to the site myself throughout the month of May, so be sure to check those out. Opportunity number two to get some Bradley dollars comes quickly. I'm dealt pocket nines on the button. Same opponent from the last hand opens a 20 for middle position. I call. Right away, a second chance, all right. <laughs> second chance. Big Wine also calls. Three of us are still in. Dealer puts out Queen 7 Deuce Rainbow. It's the quintessential dry board. Probably didn't even know that I use words that big. Well, I do. That's right, four syllables. Thought there was some chance it was five because I'm not that smart, so I looked it up. Turns out it is four. Not sure why you guys are even making this such a big deal. Let's get back to the poker, please. We all check. The dealer lets me choose any turn card I want, and I decide that a nine would be okay. Just like that, we've got a set. Checks to me, I bet 30. Big blind lays his hand down, the middle position player calls, I put him on some type of draw. What do you need? Huh? What do you need? What do I need? I don't know, what do you need? The river is another seven, the opponent checks, we make a boat, and we're going to be sailing away with all the money. The draws miss, so I don't think I can get called by much other than a queen, which is unlikely given the action, or a seven. Those hands will be willing to call a larger bet, and that's why I make it a hundred. The player folds quickly and says, I didn't need the seven. Nine was not a good card for you either, man. I was still alive. I was still alive. Thank you. I have the next The stack is looking healthy. We're up almost 700 before picking up King Nine of Hearts in the cutoff. Under the gun plus two limps in. The hijack calls. I raise to 30. Small blind calls. And under the gun plus two calls. The hijack folds. Three of us see the flop. King 5-4 with two spades and one heart. Checks to me, I bet 50. The small blind folds, under the gun plus two calls. We're heads up, the turn is the 10 of spades. The opponent checks, I pump the brakes and check back. The river is the six of spades, four to the flusher out there. The opponent leads out for 60. Few thoughts are going through my mind. One is that the player had a lot more chips about a half hour ago. He's lost several hands and several hundred dollars to go along with it. Saw him bluff in some of those hands, and he got caught, so I know he's capable. His pulse is throbbing quite a bit. He looks uncomfortable. May not mean much, but all those things, coupled with the fact that I'm getting a good price, induces me to call. I toss out a calling chip. The opponent has king seven of clubs. He turned his top pair into a bluff. Our king is best. We make the hero call and are rewarded. Time to play with some other folks. The floor man helps me rack up my chips. Unfortunately, every time I switch tables, I can only start out with the $500 maximum at a new table. So I color up, put the profit of $845 from the first table into my pocket. Pick up kings in the hijack and I open to 20. The button calls and the big blind calls. Three of us see the flop. It's ace, queen, jack, rainbow. That's not the best flop ever. We all check. The turn is another ace. It makes it less likely that one of my opponents has me beat. So it's a good card. The big blind checks. I go for thin value. I want a worse hand to call, so I can't make it too much. I bet 15. The button calls. The big blind folds. The river is a deuce. I employ the same strategy of betting small to get calls by a wide range of hands. I make it 30, and I get called right away. I show the kings. They're good. Later, the button would tell me that he had a king jack. There's only one question that the opponent has left. You made the vlog? Yes, you did. I've got some bad news for him. It's actually not going to make the vlog. Too small of a hand. Erase that one from your memory. I profit $72 to the second table before getting involved in a bomb pot at the third table. Everyone agrees to put in 20, but we do it in order after getting dealt the cards to avoid any potential gaming issues. Eight of us see the flop. It comes nine, six, deuce, with two diamonds. I look down and have jack nine offsuit with a jack of diamonds. I've got top pair with a medium kicker and a backdoor diamond draw. I look up and see that the big blind is firing for 65. 
The Under the Gun player folds, the action's on me, six other players involved at the moment, and one that has showed significant strength by betting from early position into seven players at the time. I have a medium strength hand at best. The range I put the big blind on is a set, two pair hands, over pairs, better top pairs, potentially flush draws, straight draws, or combo draws. Here's what that range looks like, including a ton of weak diamond combinations, which I don't think you necessarily bet with. Against the widest range we could possibly put our opponent on, our hand is still a pretty big underdog. Couple that with the fact that there are very few turn cards that we'll want to see, and multiple players left to act, they could put in a raise, causing us a potentially light $65 on fire if we call. We're not in great shape. For that reason, I'm out. I fold, fold around to the small blind, he calls. The turn is one of those few cards that I would have wanted to see. It's actually the best card in the deck, being the last nine that's not a diamond. The small blind checks, the big blind slides in a stack of yellows, the small blind folds, showing 5-3 of diamonds, and the big blind shows ace-4 of diamonds. There probably aren't two better hands that I could have been up against, and I obviously would have been in great shape if I called. Poker is much easier when you know what people have and you can minimize variables, but I wanted to go through this to show that it's important to make the best decisions you can based on all the information you have available at the time. Try not to focus on the outcome too much. I still believe folding the flop is the most profitable play in the long run. I leave that table down 35 there, but still at plenty overall in the night. The fourth table is a lively one. We grab a drink and cheers with an up and coming poker vlogger named Q. Be sure to check her out on YouTube. I pick up pocket nines here in the big blind. The cutoff opens at 25, I call. We're heads up, the flop comes 4-4 four, four deuce. I check, cutoff checks back. The turn is a third four. We've got a boat, I bet 20. It's a small bet because it seems like my opponent has two overs, won't be able to call much more. He does call, I imagine he'll have seven outs, a fourth four will give the ace high the win too, if that's what he has. I'm hoping the river will be a small card, that isn't quite the case, it's a jack. Checking is okay, but I still feel comfortable betting small for value, I make it 30. The opponent, who's a thinking player, raises to 180. I'm annoyed, and it's easy to let this go and move on to the next hand, but pretty much at the top of my range for how this hand played. I think the cutoff would have bet flop with any overpair, and I don't think he would have called turn with a hand like king jack or queen jack. Even ace jack is a little bit loose. My hand is kind of face up, so it seems like my opponent may recognize that I have a middle pocket pair, and can put me in a tough spot by overbetting, possibly as a bluff. I call, of course I'm wrong, no one ever bluffs Rivers Big in a $5 big blind game. I'm an idiot and have to pay that man his money. I don't even have time to add on before picking up pocket jacks on the button. Q opens a 30 from under the gun, under the gun plus two and the hijack call. I've noticed that Q's been playing pretty tight. She opened big from early position, so I'm not loving the situation. There's $100 in the middle. I only have about 260 total in my stack. Bolding seems ridiculous, and so does calling to set mine with a premium hand and around 50 big blinds, so I rip it in there, hoping it'll fold through, or I'll get called by two overs, knowing there's a very good chance that's not what I'm gonna be up against. Q reshoves, and I know I'm in trouble. It's not good. I guess you got me beat. You, we have aces? Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Kings? What the fuck? Oh, spade? Spade. Nice hand, nice hand. Take back what I said earlier about checking out our YouTube channel. What a jerk. I certainly will not have a link to her great videos in the description box below. Don't bother looking. Time to reach into the profit pouch, take out some white chips to add on. Despite losing two big hands in a row, I'm still up around 350 total. Plus, there are a lot of interesting people here. Ramsey from Live at the Bike takes a seat. Then I head to my fifth table where I'm reunited with Edgar, the local legend. He's got the most expensive hat in this joint. At this new, non-table with doom, I pick up pocket jacks under the gun plus two in a straddle pot. Under the gun plus one is first to act and opens to 25. He's gonna have a very tight range and I'm much deeper than before. Plus, there's no additional money in the middle. So instead of three betting like you saw me do last hand, I flat. The under the gun straddler also calls. Three of us see the flop and it's nine, six, five rainbow. Both players check. I need to protect my equity. I bet 40. The under the gun player folds. Under the gun plus one calls or heads up. The turn is the deuce of spades. Under the gun plus one checks. I'm gonna continue to bet. I slide in 90. That gets it done. The opponent folds and shows that he had king 10 of clubs. We take down the pot. 
Later, we're dealt ace-queen offsuit on the button in another straddle pot. The hijack opens at 35. Calling or three betting are both good options. I go with the call, the under the gun straddler calls, three of us see the flop, and it's 8-3 deuce rainbow. The opponents both check, ace-queen has some value, I check back. The turn is the four of clubs, there are two clubs out there. The under the gun player checks, the hijack bets 50. This bet doesn't make any sense to me, the four shouldn't have changed much. If the hijack had 6-5, ace-5, or an overpair, he likely would have bet flop. Seems like he's turning his hand into a bluff. My ace-queen might be good, but I don't want to call and let the under the gun player come in behind. I also prefer to put pressure on the hijack in case he has one pair, ace-queen, or ace-king. I turn my hand into a bluff, raising to 165. To be honest, my hand doesn't make a ton of sense either. I'm mostly repping sets and ace-5. I probably would have bet most of these combos on the flop as well. The under the gun player is confused, and rightfully so. Eventually, he lays his hand down, the hijack folds, we make a move that works out, and we win the pot. We're up 200 more here before having to take that off and start with a fresh $500 stack at the last table of the night. I pick up queen jack suited in the hijack, it's a straddle pot, under the gun plus one limps in, I raise to 40. The limper calls, we're heads up, the flop comes, queen 10 deuce with two hearts, the opponent checks, I bet 45. Under the gun plus one decides that he wants to play for all of it, he shoves for 315 total. This is where the table talk gets pretty interesting. Can you show me one? He wants to put the... Man, I feel like we're flipping here. I flip over the jack of spades, then a few moments later, the opponent shows that he's got a jack of his own. <laughs> There's no way I could possibly be behind. This should be a lesson to you to never flip over a card. You should generally not engage in table talk when people are asking you questions. Alright, I call. Alright. <laughs> I think we're gonna try this one out, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's fun. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the table. Uh, you. <laughs> he doesn't show the Jackie <laughs> Fold. <laughs> you don't show the Jackie Fold. <laughs> I honestly don't know if I would have folded or not had I not seen the Jack. Once I did, I thought we were probably chopping. You can hear my voice after. I don't seem particularly excited to win. And I actually felt bad because he's a nice guy but I guess that's poker, and maybe by him doing that, it'll serve as a good lesson for everyone watching not to expose cards. That's it for this session. I take out the profit stash and add it back to the stack in front of me. I was only in for the initial 500, so I book a nice win. Thank you. Right, watch yes, the cash out now. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's lost. That's it for my time here at Hollywood Park. Uh, had a, had a, it was pretty awesome, man. Today I won 840, played for a little over six hours. We had 12 tables going for the meetup game, so that's the second biggest one that we've ever had. And uh, staff here did a great job. I ran about as good as I could have run in the beginning and then went through uh, this weird time when Nothing I was doing was right or worked out, and I lost like 500. I think it was at my fourth table of the night or something, but had that last hand with the queen jack. That was pretty cool, and then I had the bluff with the ace queen. That was fun, so uh, yeah. Gonna head to the bar now, and then get up early and drive back to Vegas tomorrow. The night doesn't go exactly as I expect. We do go to the bar, and we have drinks with a bunch of people, including Ramsey, Dennis, and Eric from Live at the Bike. But then we had to Eric's electric bike and scooter factory called Luna. It's an incredible place with all kinds of toys. Most of them he sells, but there are a few I got to test drive that he souped up and they're a little too fast for the public. Here's me on one of them without the clip being sped up at all. Pretty awesome way to end the night. I agree with that. That's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. I want to give a big thanks to everybody who came out to Hollywood Park Casino and uh, the property itself for allowing us to have our first ever Southern California meetup game. It was a huge success. So we'll be back there for sure, uh, probably at some point after the series. 
If you're looking to improve your poker game, be sure to check out pokercoaching.com. I have a link down below in the description box. It'll give you a huge discount. And I'm gonna be contributing to the site myself throughout the month of May. So I'm gonna be posting uh, some hand quizzes, kind of like the one that you saw in this video. It's gonna be a lot more in-depth analysis than what, I, than what I usually do on the vlog. So um, be sure to become a member, check out those quizzes, and quizzes from uh, you know Jonathan Little, Matt Affleck, Alex Fitzgerald and uh, uh, Evan. So he's a he's a new coach. I, I played with him at Run It Up Reno, which Run It Up Reno I got smoked at. By the way, um, you'll see some videos on that coming up. Should be interesting. Uh, the next meetup games are going to be at the Texas Card House in Austin, May 8th and May 9th. Then we're doing our our first ever meetup game at the South Point Casino in Las Vegas. Really excited about that. They have 22 tables available, so uh, everybody will get in right away, which is awesome. Uh, we were a little bit limited at the Westgate, but uh, yeah, that's not going to be an issue uh, at the South Point. And then we're still going out to Houston. That's going to be May 22nd and May 23rd. We'll be out there at the Paramount Social Club. So if you guys are in the areas for any of these meetup games, come hang out, have some drinks, play poker with Andrew and me. Hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you guys next time.